Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So I'm here at nighttime with a QYC uh, underwater drone or submarine, whatever you want to call it. And you may have seen my first unboxing review of this guy. And I was having some problems actually uh, connecting this to the, um, the Wi-Fi on the phone. Basically the phone connects to the controller and then you have a tether that connects from the controller to the submarine itself. So what I had to do, since this is a demo version, I guess the uh, Wi-Fi was actually connecting through the international channels, channel 12 and 13, and for the US, for Android, my Android device could only see like 11 and below. So went ahead and did a Telnet with um, the instruction of some of the QYC engineers. And by the way, that's the way you pronounce the company is QYC. I had a video chat with them and they said that's the way you pronounce the company. So it's the QYC Five Fish P3 is what this one's called. So anyway, we're going to do a pool test, got everything working. We're going to see how this thing kind of maneuvers around the pool. I'm going to show you the controls, show you the interface on the screen. And then I think tomorrow I'm actually going to do an ocean test. So watch out for that video. That's going to be fun too. So anyway, without further ado, let's get started with the QYC Five Fish P3 pool test. When you plug this one in, the sub will come on. You can hear it starting up. There's the battery level there. I think it's just about fully charged. Screw that on tight. You can kind of hear it's trying to self-stabilize already. Go ahead and put it in the water. Okay. And that's going to start to try to fill itself. It's going to start flooding itself there and getting everything um, ready to go with all the water inside of it. If I wanted to stop that from happening, I could always just press the lock on the controller there and it will stop all the motors and everything. So you don't have to worry about that. I don't think I'm going to record my screen tonight, but I'm going to show you with the video camera what I'm doing here. We'll definitely be recording the screen in the ocean test so you can see what's going on. Okay, so we're connected. Now all we need to do is launch the um, QYC application, which is just called FiFish app. Um, okay, so launching that, and what we're looking for is the sub here. There's also just a little bit of a video you can watch here, tutorials. Um, this is kind of just a demo, like a pre-launch application. There are a couple of dots up here on the top left. You can see that that's still under, under development. And all we need to do is, you can see the uh, Five Fish P3 here, just pressing go dive. And so it's gonna go through its connection phase. You're gonna wanna make sure at this time you have this plugged into the controller, the tether, and it says robot connect success. So we're gonna start control. And there we go. So first thing I wanna do is turn on the lights. So with this roller here, check that out. So I'm turning on the lights. I'm gonna turn them all the way up. Now there's eight settings. If you hold this roller down, nothing happens. So you have to push it each time. And that's as bright as you can get. So I'm gonna take off lock here. Okay, now I should be able to control the drone. And the way this works, you can see the FPV on the screen there, pretty cool. You can also see kind of a compass there. As I'm rotating it, you see this, hopefully you can see this in the camera. But there is a compass north south east west rotating and i think that's the my phone compass and then you can also see which way the drone is facing compared to the compass and that's actually correct as far as the compass of my phone goes i'm not sure about the drone but we'll figure all that out right now so first thing i want to do is submerge so this uses a vertical thruster um, so you have to pull down you're gonna see the thing go down in the water. So there it goes down. I just put some things in the water, like some snorkels and stuff, so you guys could see what's going on. And what I'll do is I'll um, just go all the way down here. You wanna flood the drone with water. There's probably some air bubbles. You wanna get those out. And I'm gonna take a couple pictures. Um, so with the left trigger here, I'm gonna click the picture button. 
and it doesn't look like anything's happening so with this one you actually have to hold down the picture button and what's cool about this one is it starts taking burst shots when you hold it down so if you're trying to get fish that are moving or whatever you can actually take a few burst shots so it's kind of wanting to rise a little bit in this water here um, pushing on the left stick forward now this is in the low setting here on the top right of the controller there's a switch that goes from low to high so I'm just kind of pulling down keeping it low and then I'm just rotating it with the left stick turning the head just like a regular drone you have your yaw there and the difference is um, when I push forward on the left stick it's going forward not up like a drone would go up so that is on the right stick up and down you know what I mean for going deeper depth and the cool thing you'll notice about this one you know what I'm gonna do is start recording and I'll have this up on the screen too I don't I'm, I think this is just gonna be 1080 but let's just try recording in uh, in 1080 so you guys can see this okay so it says on the screen start recording video I want to submerge again so this seems like it slowly kind of floats up if you have it in stabilized mode I think if you lock the motors it will actually um, stay down there if you kind of lock it when it's down low if you want to but it seems too that in this fresh in the fresh water the buoyancy uh, is it seems a little, a little bit light so we'll see how it is in the salt water tomorrow and uh, but this is how it's performing in fresh water so I'll have that video up on the screen on occasion just so you guys can see what's happening let me get this little skimmer in the pool some video of it and I'm going to show you how this one's different than other uh, submarines like remember the Gladius I did a review on that one multiple videos on that one and this one's a little bit different because this only has a single um, depth motor thruster so you can't really pitch it up and down or and there's no stabilization left and right so all you can do on this one is go forward you can turn the head right and left see how I'm turning it you can go up and down you cannot pitch or roll like the gladius could so a little bit different you know so keep that in mind if you're if you're looking for something that can't pitch up and down this one's for you but what this can do that the gladius can't is it can give you a very smooth up and down shot so if you wanted to go just up and lift the thing vertically up but still have the camera horizontal that's what this one does really good you can see how I'm going down but it doesn't have any um, roll stabilization so as you can see when we turn I'm gonna let off the stick now it locks its heading but look at that little bit of a rock back and forth so a little bit different of control turning and going forward are very similar I'm just gonna kind of zoom around this is low speed so you guys can see how this thing is looking underwater forgive me the pool is a little bit dirty this pool here because um, we haven't been using it and there's a little bit of sediment in it in there you can probably see on the bottom but this is it just zooming around and um, first what I thought this a button does in the controller I first thought that, that it kind of puts it in auto um, depth but now that the cavity is actually all the air bubbles are released you see how it's staying there on the bottom pretty good it's staying down at it says a negative about a foot on the altitude here or the depth on the on the uh, the screen what's cool about this is I can touch this little bottom right section and I can take off all the controls I want and I can actually set that up too if I wanted to and uh, when we do our ocean test I'll go through all that and I'll be adjusting things and recording the screen for you guys but I'm not going to be recording the screen in this one so it's going up a little bit slowly it held its step for a while but now it kind of went back up so I'm going to kind of go back down here and we'll keep going kind of forward and turning and so you can get a look at how that video is so a little bit wobbly from side to side and that's something that the gladius does better if I bring it close here and we just look at this motor setup so it's got two motors in the rear for forward and rear and turning thrusters and it's just got one on top right so it's not going to have any roll stabilization um, but as I was saying uh, you can get 
straight down level shots like keeping it horizontal and gaining and losing depth which you can't really do with uh, the gladius so that is definitely a plus and the cool thing about this being wired into the controller is uh, I'm not getting any um, Wi-Fi dropouts the gladius once in a while at least the first generation I have uh, I was getting that wireless dropout because it has a wireless buoy that you can have away from you there's no direct connection into the controller anyway so this is how the thing looks zooming around in the water now if I pull this little stick here to the right that's high speed and what the high speed does is it doesn't change the speed of the vertical thruster motor um, going up or down in depth what it does change though is yawing and also going forward and back so look how much faster it is now that's full speed and we can see that when I put the brakes on it wanted to kind of the back kind of goes down a little bit but when we go full forward it's really just staying very level so I'm just going to zoom around here a little bit so you guys can see what's happening drop it down it kind of came up a little bit so you can do very fast turns and look when I let off the yaw stick watch this boom so it goes a little bit and then it tries to lock its compass there is a compass on board so it's trying to lock that let's see how good it is at staying down there it should stay down on the bottom if I kind of just hold it down there and then let off the stick it's supposed to maintain its depth automatically if you don't have any any sticks going and it looks like it is doing it fairly well it's slowly eventually coming up so maybe there's some air bubbles still in there again this one you cannot roll left and right so that's the way this one's working and again this is just a quick little pool 1080p test and I will have that video up there but cool for like inspecting maybe like if you wanted to inspect uh, things that were vertical in the ocean let's see this skimmer here so we can just get it in our sights here with the camera I'll just yaw a little bit to the right left and then straight down I'm just pulling the stick down and you can see how we can descend but keep the camera flat again that's something that the gladius couldn't do okay so just zooming around here putting in so you can go forward and turn at the same time I'm just pushing full stick forward now I have it full up into the uh, left full up into the right not quite as fast as the gladius I want to say so if you're looking for something that was super speedy this one's a little less quick the gladius sure did feel like a uh, little jet, jet fighter underwater but this is still you know it's still pretty quick still doing pretty good definitely not quite as stable um, on the roll axis because it doesn't have those dual thrusters so if we look at it here you know maybe that's something that the next generation of these things could have so far with with these guys is they're lacking um, vertical thrusters and roll thrusters all at the same time let me lock the motors here so we don't have to hear that see how I I just locked it and um, it stopped all the motors and now see how it's sinking so apparently it um, evacuated all the bubbles from its cavity and now it has a negative buoyancy so it's just going to keep going down so be careful if you turn off the motors and lock it all it might start just dropping until you turn the motors back on let's try and turn the motors back on and it might just kind of stay down there if it remembers its depth yeah so you can see the motors kind of like pushing it down holding it down until I slowly bring it up there we go some full thruster up okay so pretty cool I want to show you this auto button too so all the auto does is whatever input you have so say I'm, I'm going forward or say I want to go down really deep and I don't want to hold my thumb on the stick I'm not, I'm not sure how useful this is but it's something um, different anyway say I wanted to either go down or go forward for a long time and I didn't want to just keep pushing the stick you can uh, push a control 
and then press auto the A button. When the A button goes on, whatever control you had going, it'll just lock that and keep it doing that. You know what I mean? So if you had slightly forward and the A, you press the A, it's going to keep going slightly forward. Let's try that. So I'm going slightly forward. I just press the A. I don't have any other controls. I can't do anything else. And it's just going to lock whatever it was doing and lock you out of all the controls. So not sure how useful that is. Maybe just going down very deep in depth. But, you know, all you got to do is hold down the stick anyway. And at least you can control your other sticks. So I'm not sure really, again, how useful that is. But anyway, this is the thing roaming around. Kind of cool. And this is supposed to have a one inch uh, sensor camera, FYI. And you can see the lag here. Let me just try to get the, the um, phone here and the control. So you can see how that's maybe about, I wanna say three to 500 milliseconds of lag before you get the video of what the drone's doing or the submarine. But again, just turning the head and it locks its compass in when you let off the controls. It stabilizes itself. It looks like it kicks back a little bit when you let off. So you're gonna get a little bit of that rolly video when you have um, hard movements. You see how it's a little less stable. Pretty interesting. I think it's gonna be pretty fun in the ocean water. Oh, one more thing I wanted to show you. So you see how it does try to lock its heading um, on, its, on its yaw. It's turning its head. But when you do push forward, you're gonna to want to hit the brakes because when you do push forward and let off, it will coast until you pull back. So, good or bad, I don't know. Let's see if it does the same thing in reverse. Yeah, so it is gonna coast a bit when you let off the stick. And again, this is full speed in, uh, in high mode. Let's just get that one more time coming fast towards us. Go up a little bit and full stick forward. That's basically how fast it's going in this small pool. I know it's a pretty small pool, but it's actually perfect for this kind of testing. Because we can see how the thing's working. We can reach some pretty good speeds. We just don't, whoa, we just don't have much depth here. If you do uh, surface, let's try to surface here real quick. So I'm gonna stop here and then I'm gonna push up. That's, that was its maximum speed on surfacing. When it does surface, check it out. It actually pushes itself down like, wow, that time it went all the way to the bottom. Just a little bit. I'm gonna try to surface again and hold it there for a sec. So I'm not sure about the maximum surface speed. I guess that could be really slow, but that is what it's doing anyway. Okay. So I surfaced and I'm just letting off the stick and I just want to see where it kind of hangs out in its stabilized mode. Okay, so it does seem like it's going to the bottom. So interesting, that's kind of what we can expect there. Still got bubbles coming out, I guess, because that's because I just surfaced. Okay, even though I'm not recording the screen, I am just going to kind of go into the menu here and show you some more of the screen. Hopefully you can see this on the camera and it's not too bright. But you see when we do press these buttons here, we also get a highlight in green of what button's pressed. So the lock, the little lock turns green on there. Then we have our battery up here on the top right. We have more options. We have how many pictures we can take up there on the top. The video is, whoop, lock those motors. The video is still recording. So you can see the video time ticking away up there. And then this is our date. And I guess this is uh, how long it's been running for this session, I think. 33 minutes and 13 seconds. And then we have our depth gauge up there. It maxes out at 100 meters all the way down. And this is interesting here. So this is kind of a little compass map on the bottom left. And it's actually keeping track of our route. So again, we already saw as I turn my phone, it's actually turning the compass and that is correct because that is north over there. So that's right. And if I turn the, turn the drone itself, let me unlock it. I'll try to turn it. 
so I don't know kind of interesting I'm not sure why it looks like the drone is kind of moving as I move the controller maybe they need to kind of work on that a little bit I think the sub is supposed to only have the front light with the um, the heading turn when I turn the actual sub and it is there turning but I don't think it's supposed to do that when you turn uh, your controller so anyway hopefully they can work on that if we press like I was saying if we press in the bottom right corner everything goes off we have a clear view and you can set that up in the settings we'll go into in just a second um, I just want to press on this little plus magnifying glass on this map here and so this might be cool once they get the compass and everything working perfectly if you get lost, say you're out there in the ocean, right? And you get lost, you can actually, um, of course, it's just this tiny little green line because I'm in this tiny little pool, but say you're going out, you know, up to 100 meters, it's going to track your line in a um, horizontal fashion. So what I'm thinking is once they get this compass heading right on the drone, where it's not supposed to be turning as I'm turning the controller. Uh, I actually use it with my tablet and it worked pretty good. You can go ahead and you can kind of track, hopefully back on that green line and kind of bring yourself back, sort of, where you're, where you're going. Of course, there's no GPS on this, but at least it's kind of something. And then um, you can see the video, you can still see the video on the bottom. Nothing else here, there's no like, bathymetry of the ocean floor or anything that would be kind of cool if they had some kind of sonar imagery of the ocean floor just for instead of all these little squares anyway we press plus again and it brings us back to our fpvs and we're ready to go let's go ahead and kind of go into the options real quick so we're just going to kind of just hover here at the bottom it looks like it's holding its depth really good right now i'm just going to kind of stop it right there take some video of this <laughs> little gun and this ball while we're talking about the settings so up at the very top I'm gonna click settings and this is where this thing is pretty cool um, you go into collection and you can see how those are some of the pictures I've been taking so we can go and we can look at our pictures so there's a couple of the pictures there and uh, there was a picture I took actually in my house and you can see how clear it is outside of the water too so like some of the other drones have problems with blurriness outside of the water because they don't have flat lenses but this has a flat lens so even outside of the water it, it was very good okay so that thing is still down there and then we can make the um, pictures larger if we want scroll through scroll through and then we can actually just click and hold and we can trash them if we wanted to okay so we're gonna trash that so a basic little viewer the videos are on the card so the videos aren't showing up in that collection yet and it shows you um, sale time 20 it looks like 12 miles of total distance was traveled um, SD card capacity it is recording right now so it's ticking away 87% uh, left and it shows you uh, for shooting how many pictures or how many hours of recording so in 1080 I can record for nine hours it looks like on this cards okay so we did that now let's go into settings and this is where we can kind of see we can change our temperature settings between centigrade and Fahrenheit uh, we can do depth meters or foot and to tell you the truth I'm not sure where it's showing the temperature um, yeah, so that's one of the things I really haven't seen yet on the screen, so I guess maybe they're working on that. FYI, I'm not seeing any temperature on there. So anyway, back into settings. Um, so that was the general settings. And then if we go into image settings, this is pretty cool because you have a lot of stuff you can do here. You can do BLC, backlight control, and you can do ISO adjustment. So from 100 to 6400 in the ISO. You can do auto white balance and then when you hit auto white balance here you can do incandescent like little filters d400 d5000 D actually 4000 5000 sunny conditions cloudy conditions flash fluorescent underwater so this underwater actually puts a little red filter on there you can see the screen turned red so if you're really deep I don't know maybe that'll help you with uh, blue water issues but I'm just gonna go back to auto here 
for in the pool. You can see how the screen turned back a little bit blue there. So that's the image settings and then you have video settings and this is where we can record in 4K, 1080 and you can go between 25 and 30 frames per second max. So you can see we are recording in uh, 1080 here. Okay, and that's all we can do in video settings and then we go into brief settings and this is where you can turn it off on and off these little icons when you do on the main FPV screen when you do press that little right hand bottom corner you can either have some of these on or some of them off. I'm just going to turn them all off just so we get a clear view. Okay, so that's basically it. Having the lights fully blasting on that all the time I was talking, that was they were fully blasted and I was running around. Now this thing was it is a demo model, so a bunch of reviewers have been using this. Um, and you can see that the battery has dropped to 65% or what it thinks it's 65% on the um, drone itself or the submarine itself so i hope you enjoyed that uh, let me bring it up and let's try to take it out of the water see how easy this thing is to take out of the water once we're done so we're going to come all the way up probably what we want to do is just lock the motors and then it is going to drop maybe it won't in salt water but it's dropping here i want to stop the recording so i can either hold the middle of the screen or i can press the record video button again. Let's try to hold the middle of the screen. There we go. So it has this little circle and it's closing video. You can also take pictures. I forgot to tell you that. Let me unlock it. Let's go over here and let's just take a picture of these little toys over here. <coughs> okay. So you can just tap the middle of the screen and you see that it tells you where it's storing it. The screen's kind of flashing. So you can do that. Let's see how fast we can start taking pictures. Okay, so if you're tapping the screen, it takes it like every two seconds. But again, if you click and hold the, the picture button, watch the flashing on the screen, how it takes a, like a whole bunch of pictures burst. So boom, boom, boom. So it's taking them like every half a second and it's just bursting the pictures. So that's actually a pretty cool feature. I kind of like that. Okay, so say we want to bring it up. We're bringing it up to our boat. I got full stick up. I'm gonna lock it so the motors aren't shooting water everywhere. We got the video recording stopped. Let's see how we can just pull this thing up. So the cool thing about this is it has that anchor on the drone. So you're not really hurting the connector by pulling it up like this. And let's just see kind of how durable this thing is. So I'm just holding the whole thing up right now with the cable. And it looks like that. I'm not feeling any slipping or anything. So that's going to definitely be sturdy enough to lift it up on this tether. Okay. And there we go. We're, we're all set. All we need to do is unplug it. Of course, maybe have like a... Um, a wipe with you or if you're in the salt water just dump some some fresh water on this connector before you unplug it and all you got to do is unscrew it to turn it off remember this will stay on as long as this is plugged in so you definitely want to unscrew and then just pull out and the whole thing turns off okay and I just basically plugged in without doing anything with the controller and let's just see how easy it is to reconnect if I still have all the app open and everything Boom, easy reconnection, no fiddling or anything. Okay, so that's that's the way it is, guys. That's the uh, QIC Five Fish uh, P3 initial pool test. I hope you enjoyed that, really enjoyed that. That was really fun for me to kind of show you guys. And thanks for hanging out with me in my backyard in the small little pool. And I'll see you guys in the, uh, the ocean test coming up pretty soon. You know, see what how this thing does in a little bit of current get some coral hopefully some sea life and see how it does again i'll have the uh, link for this guy down in the description so you can check it out see what the specs are how much it costs and i will see you in the ocean test thanks for watching